so if you're watching this, this video is no longer live. This is previously recorded. I am cutting out um, some NCW, which is the Necessary Clutch Wallet from Emmeline. And the Emily Tote Bag, which is by me. <clears throat> okay. So these need eight oh nine, eight oh nine, eight oh nine. Work on this one in a minute. Hello everyone. Hi. Hi Maddie, Mary Cruz, Shana. Diane. Oh, sorry. I'm sure that was super loud. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs> we had a snow day. Oh, so fun. Love that. I'm on. You're not necessarily safe, then I don't love that. Hoping to get some inspiration. Yeah, it's hard. It can definitely be not fun. That's for sure. So I'm using my heat press to flatten all of my pieces. I bought another pegboard over here which is awesome. Um, it was really stressing me out how many rulers I had on one pegboard, so I went and bought another one to help. Oh, Brittany, the peekaboos were a hit for Christmas. I love that, and I loved seeing that you made some for guys, too. Not that they can't be for guys, but just that you... I don't know. <laughs> Becky said I'm in a sewing funk. Mmm. Man, if I don't relate to that. <laughs> if I don't relate to that. Yeah, I feel like everyone has been kind of going through that lately. Not everyone, of course, but, you know, a lot of people. It's been a long year. Burnout is real. I mean, as you guys know, I've just been sewing the same thing for like five years now. <laughs> So I completely get it. Um, I like to have a bolt of interfacing that I cut in squares only, and then I have another um, that I use to cut out random pieces that makes my brain a lot happier. Definitely in a funk, looking to find my sojo. Ugh, I know. It's so hard, especially with a growing business and a little baby. So, Monica, you are doing amazing, just so you know. Good morning, Tammy. Oh, hi, Kayla. Kayla, tickets for So Magical Expo go on sale soon, don't they? I mentioned it in my New Year NCW Live. Okay, so I am using 809 to interface these pieces. These are wristlet straps that I like to add to it. Oh, Karen says, Monica, I adore so Hughes Plus. Me too. So good. Oof, that thing is so squeaky. Hello, Summer. Love the walkthrough video of the new shop. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Hi, Cindy. How's it going?
Oh, thank you, Inga. The Pascal pouch. Yeah, so this is that new vinyl that's going to be releasing sometime next year. And I'm going to get the watercolor roses in this print um, rush made because so many people are asking for it. Uh, so hopefully we'll have that soon. You're good. Oh, I'm glad. I always get worried when I don't see familiar names. The old, the old names. <laughs> Adding 809 to these zipper pocket, inside zipper pocket pieces. Something that really helps me with cutting and interfacing is organization. And if things on my table, etc., aren't organized, I just can't. I can't do it. I think this one is what, eight by eight and a half? This piece is just barely too small, but that's fine. Oh wait, nope, I've already cut it wrong. Okay, great. Oh, just finished the stuffy shoulder bag, that's exciting. Oh, Anne said, do you have any ideas for your wall yet? No, I don't. It already took a lot of effort for me to just hang up that pegboard last night, so. I can't. Couldn't even go into work today. I'm just so tired. So tired. Ooh. Okay, there's these pieces, which we will need to cut out of our lining. Add that to that stack. These still need 809. So I like to do one of the bodies of the wallet with a piece of 809 and one with some uh, woven fabric. I work for Volkswagen here in Brazil. Oh, very cool. I was sewing pouches yesterday that were really thick for the top stitching and I could not get it to top stitch without loops in the bobbin. Any suggestions? I have the 1181. Oh man, I'm not sure any tips that I have. Um, let's see. Other than maybe trying a thicker needle or adjusting your tension just a little bit. Having things cut um, by what interfacing I'll need also really helps. So like before I got all of my interfacing on, I figured out I need 809 on these, I need woven fuse or a woven interfacing on another, like that kind of thing. Oh, thank you, Shannon. I packed up my sewing area today. I'm waiting for my dream box to arrive today. What is a dream box? It sounds like a coffin for a vampire or something. Like you just sleep in there. It's a dream box. 
So I've roughly cut everything out and now I'm trimming down through the interfacing and the cotton because you're never going to use every single scrap of interfacing. So I may as well make it easier for myself. And then always make sure that you let your item cool down before you finish cutting or go back to handling it or anything. That'll help prevent any wrinkles, etc. I have been in the same issue before. I had a brand new needle, size 20, so I'll have to practice. Oh, okay, yeah, man. Uh, finally caught a live. I absolutely adore my grand opening box. Already using the vinyl, yay! I have trouble getting 809 to stick. I don't have a heat press. Yeah, that is definitely um, tough to get 809 to stick. You want to make sure you use absolutely no steam and a nice, even surface. Um, I don't know that I have any tricks. It is a very chatty heat press. Yeah, it sings a song after 20 seconds or so, which I could change that setting but it's happened before that I've walked away to do something and I need it to go off so I don't press it long. Okay. I also like to keep all of my projects in bins I have links for this cart. Uh, where do you get the containers? You organize all your to-do bags. So these are just um, those like rainbow drawer carts. They have them at Michael's, they have them on Amazon, etc. And then these are photo container pieces. Um, so I've already got all of my hardware in there. kind of stack these together to keep everything organized and you can even use a dry erase marker to write what's in it on the front in case you can't come back to it or you could write what you still need for it too which can be very helpful okay that one I think this is for an Emily bag. No, I'm not sure. Because they don't have any triangle enders. That or I use them already. This is for my Emily bag. So that's my goal is just those three bags today cut. This is for some other day. So I probably won't be cutting out all of the stuff that I need for my NCWs. I'm not going to worry about the linings yet. I just want to get the exterior fabrics interfaced because that's what is in front of me. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that. Get out of the way. Grab my so fuse interfacing um, I saw that Jess from Oakla Roots is working on an interfacing video so super excited to check that out so I can source people to that um, I know it's something I've been meaning to do I have a really old one but I don't know if it's still relevant there's just so, so many types of interfacing out there now. Hmm, no. There we go. Why does that seem better? I don't think it is.
The heat press that I have is um, brandless from eBay, I think. I believe this interfacing is um, the SoFuse interfacing from Monica Casting, the Cast Iron Handcrafted. <laughs> Fierce Kittens just did an interfacing video. That's right. I did see that. I didn't get a chance to watch that one. But I love Georgia. She is awesome. These hoodies are stocking January 15th, in case you missed out on the rainbow one. Do you have chocolate on your heat press? Do I? Oh, these are cookies from Rochelle Davis from uh, Hawaii. Do you have, oh, I got an email about your glitter clips. One of my goals this year is to order from you. Oh, thank you, Laura. Um, if you guys are international, feel free to post in so whatever and see if anybody wants to order with you. Um, I mean, being careful, of course, but that might help the cost of shipping. I know, I was like, why would I put chocolate on there? But yes, that heat press has cookies. Um... Will you be getting any more of the Stay Sharp t-shirts? No, I hadn't planned to order that design again, um, but I definitely can later in the year. Oh man, oh, Maddie, someday I too will have a large cutting table, angrily shoves things around in order to cut waterproof canvas. I know that struggle, <laughs> oh man. Lauren, I would like to order your glitter clips. How do I go about it? Um, you just go to mormino.com and they're on the front page. Add to cart and you're good to go. Well, you gotta check out too, but yeah. I'm so excited about those. And I'm happy to say we are nowhere near selling out. <laughs> Everyone's like, you're gonna sell out, you're gonna sell out. I'm like, no, you, no, you don't know how many I had to order. I am in Scotland and the shipping costs are high. Ugh, ugh, I know, I hate it. We do um, refund any overages, but I, I completely get it. I know someone messaged me about DHL shipping to Australia, which um, it's UPS and DHL that's all that's shipping to Australia and New Zealand right now that I know of. And they didn't approve me for like a discounted rate, so it's it's up there. Um, uh, we will not be getting any more that I know of of the let's just sew whatever magnets. Um, but you can always email me when something is out of stock. Um, and we do have those restock alerts on the website. That kind of helps me know what people are looking for. The grass isn't greener in the other side with a higher cutting table. I end up having to use a smaller space because it's becoming a landing table for everything. Oh no. Yeah, I, yeah, pretty much same. This table is full of like vinyl samples right now. And I never wanted to be, like, that sounds weird. I didn't want to have, like, a strike team for my fabric company, but I might need to look into that because I just don't have enough time to, like, test things out 
Um, and then I do have some friends that I'll send things to, but they're getting busy too. So I don't know, I might need to do a little call out for some help. I think that's one of my goals this year is to lessen my load. I do way too much and I'm so tired. <laughs> you guys are probably like, uh, yeah, we, we know. We can tell. All right, these still need Decaville light, so I'm going to hold on to that. Fierce Kitten has a really nice interfacing video. Your old video is really good too. Would love to see an updated one though. Yeah, for sure. Um, are the zipper caps you have for size five zipper only? That's an excellent question and I would say yes. Um, yeah, I guess I start, I need to start carrying the smaller size then because I will be carrying size three zipper tape. Um, we have some size three zipper pulls that are releasing January 15th. Um, we don't have any tape at the moment, but we will with our next zipper tape releases. Hello, Charlotte. Thanks for joining us. Northern Ireland. Thanks so much for joining. Did you see the new Haunted Mansion stuff from Wizardry? I think it was retail today. Oh, no, I did not. I did just order from Wizardry, though. I ordered some of their number three zipper tape. Um, I think I got another spool of thread and a sticker. Maybe some other stuff. I can't remember. I was anxiety shopping. Just like... Um... I have not added a second layer of interfacing yet, but I will. So currently they just have um, the woven interfacing. Totally random, but I thought I would show you guys these. <sighs> she had HM webbing and zipper pulls. Oh, I feel like I did see Haunted Mansion zipper pulls. Uh, what interfacing is that? I believe it is the um, So Fuse from Cast Iron Handcrafted, but this is like a thicker canvas. Um. I don't have plans to carry double-sided tape at the moment, but if I did, I'd probably just like contact another small business and see if I could just buy it wholesale from them. Um, I would like to carry more things, but I also don't like to step on anyone else's toes as far as business goes. So I'd rather like work with other small businesses to be like a little bit of a hub but we're also overwhelmed. Um, but I did some new fabric sketches, but I also feel like I just keep doing the same thing over and over again, but like, look at those colors. So I might turn some of these into fabrics. I did this one a while ago and I was thinking of maybe doing, um, an art print with the 1181. I don't know. That one might be fun. Just random stuff. 
And then I think I want to do a leopard print with bats. But I don't know if I want to do like a purple or a rainbow or both. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I thought this one would be kind of fun. It's all neutral colors and like leopard printy. I don't know. And then maybe eventually this as a fabric. Just because Halloween cookies, why not? <laughs> I'm excited. So that's something I need to work on today. <clears throat> yeah, I really love the neutral colors. <sighs> it's freaking bad. Leopard is super popular right now. I know I'm loving leopard too, but I also love bats. So that's why I'm like leopard print and bats. It's freaking bats. A comment about a grand opening box. Um, couldn't you put me in touch with someone who might want an unopened complete grand opening box? I bought it for the fabric and my domestic skip stitches, skip stitches on the heavier fabric. Oh no. Um, yeah, you're welcome to post in so whatever about it. Or there might be someone in the chat right now who might want to get in touch with you. I'm so sorry that your machine is skipping stitches on it. I tried to pick like a middle of the road thickness. Shauna, that would be so cute. Yeah, I also want to do some like cute stripes in the water resistant canvas that would match the other fabrics and vinyl, etc. I think that would be fun. So many ideas, so little time. You know? And I think like Monica, I'm kind of struggling with who I am as a bag maker versus a business that sells bag supplies. And I'm just like, what am I doing? <laughs> What's going on? all right it's tough to be two businesses that are so closely tied facts facts and then i'm still um also running a pin company um as well so it's just like, ay, ay, ay. You and Monica just have a diverse business, business portfolio. Facts. We are all amazing boss ladies, for sure. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. How's it going?
Uh, yeah, I think we all struggle with combining our passions. Alright, you've motivated me to get up and go to my sewing room. I have birthday presents for my son, to soon to be eight years old to make. Aww. Oh, Kira, I'm so glad. Yeah, the pin in the box. That was actually my friend um, and worker, co-worker's idea, Alexis. She was like, you should do Ben glittery. I was like, you're right, let's do it. I'm ordering it. Let's do it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I am using Sofuse. Okay, so these are ready to go. I don't need this anymore. Nope. Just gonna roll her back up. Um, I need Decaville Light. The Decaville Light that I have was purchased from Cereal Bag Makers. And I think for the other one I made, I only interfaced the front flap with the deck of the light. Might try that again. I so don't understand all of the interfacing. It is a lot to learn. And having a heat press makes it so much easier. It is overwhelming for, for sure because there's interfacings and there's stabilizers, which are different. I mean, I don't think in the grand scheme of things, they're different because it's all something you add, but a stabilizer is thicker, basically, from what I understand. What do you have on your heat, what do you have your heat press on? I have it at 148 degrees Celsius. which is whatever Google says in Fahrenheit. Mm. I think I'm going to just use some scrap pieces here to interface the under panel, the lining side of the flap. Because basically what you want to do is just add a little bit more strength to the magnetic snap area. Oh, what do you have it on? I, I die. Um, I have it on a <laughs> height adjusting leg table from Ikea. <laughs> sitting on. I love it. Um, would you ever consider making large car magnets like bumper stickers, but magnets? Cause I, yeah, I actually, um, am definitely more of a car magnet person than a car sticker person. I can definitely, definitely look into it. Make sure to email me that too. So I don't forget. Cause that would be really fun. I have my steam press on my ironing board balanced on a shelf. Oh, <laughs> living dangerously, Kylie. Okay, this one's interface, this one is not. <clears throat> okay, so I am. I feel like I never interface 
the same way multiple times. We need Ben. Yes. Oh, Maddie, that's the worst. A lonely sewer. I get it though. God, I can't wait to have like classes and meetups. It would be so cool. I'm going to add Decaville light to ooh, I'm gonna throw that out the window <sighs> to the Decaville light. I'm not sure where to cut it from though. <clears throat> Here we go. I think we can all pretty much relate to being a lonely sewer. Um, I did make a post in So Whatever yesterday about all the, like asking people to post their sewing YouTube channels or their favorite sewing YouTuber or crafting YouTuber. So feel free to check that out um, and find some other amazing channels. Just because I am always watching YouTube lately, it feels like, for that reason. But even better if we can learn something. <laughs> Catherine said, I'm going to start one this year. Oh, I love that. I'm waiting on FedEx to bring my package. I got a mic for Christmas and the stuff I need to hook it up is coming. I'm excited. I forgot to post that on that thread. I will though. I'm planning on sewing. Um, yeah, someone mentioned that I should get a mic, but I don't know if there's a mic out there that works with iPhone. Um, I remember my friend Jessica mentioning it, but then I didn't look into it. But I need to. Sewing live more. I didn't finish it. Okay. <laughs> Blue Yeti has an iPhone mic. Okay. Blue Yeti. blue yeti but not the iphone one it's a good mic okay does the heat press get sticky because of the interfacing sticking to it um it definitely can and every once in a while you just want to kind of like wipe off the teflon sheet all right there is my decaville light on my emily tote i love watching victoria on seems legit she also designs her own bags yeah um, a close-up of that fabric. Oh, hi, Naomi. Thank you. Um, this is just the Harry Potter Marauders map print. Have to head to work, but it was lovely hanging out with you all. Have fun at work. 
All right, so now that I have interfaced all of my exterior fabrics that I have in front of me, I'm gonna work on cutting out the lining bits. Oh, good afternoon, Lauren and everyone. I'm glad you came on, working on taxes. Yuck. I was having trouble with my Juki top stitching is your vinyl heavy? Mine was and I ended up heating it up and then it top stitched fine. Oh wow, what an interesting trick. Um, I will say I have not had issues with my Juki in a very long time. I was actually thinking about making a video that's like, you're still the one. I'm back, my, my phone died and I couldn't find my charger. Oh no. Yeah, I wish I had more help to give with the 1181. I bought a Juki Industrial because I watched your video when you went to the sewing machine store. Yeah, that was so much fun. I wish that I could play with um, the 1541 a little bit more. I was playing with the 15, not the 1541, my um, Texo 4800 a little bit more last night and still wasn't having the most luck. My layers kept shifting, so I just need to do a little more research on why that is and how to prevent it. Um, but I figured out how to wind or load the bobbin and it seems to be working very well as far as the stitches looking good. So that's nice. A little less discouraging. <laughs> All right, so there are my card slots and then I just need the back of the card slots cut out as well. So I'll get my smaller one and do I need to interface it with 809? Yeah, I just love the way it feels. Um, where is, so here is my other roll of 809. You can see it's a mess. <clears throat> but that just kind of helps my brain feel a little bit better about what I'm cutting. <laughs> uh, that larger ruler is a 16 and a half by 16 and a half from Creative Grids. I bought it at my local quilt shop. Um, that's in, like, I think it's Lebanon. And now I'm struggling to think of the name, which makes me feel like a terrible person. Because I even taught a class there. Warm and cozy quilting. I did it. I got there. Okay. Eight by eight and a half. Eight oh eight slash eight oh nine is interfacing. It's a Deca fuse by Legacy or Pellon. It's also sometimes called Craft Fuse. Um, it, or Decor Bond. And eight oh nine is the wider version. There, I don't think there's another one.
they're exactly the same one is just a wider width perfect yeah I like to get the 809 because it's so much wider um, and I think I bought mine off of overstock.com or maybe even walmart.com they had like a huge sale and I stocked up okay so I think I'm gonna need this ruler still to cut out my Emily bag so I can put this one away grab my pocket panel piece this is my template from tops and bobbins from the bonnie bucket bag and this is like the only pocket piece i ever use to make the seven inch zipper pockets oh i need to make a list of the stabilizers slash interfacing stuff i need yeah right okay i need to find my lining for these, I like to use I'm gonna use this brown Kona cotton that I bought specifically for the Marauders Map wallets. But honestly, I really like using broadcloth for the card slots because it's so thin. But phew! Whew. Fabric dust. <clears throat> and then again I like to make sure I keep my piece square so I'm gonna go to 16 make sure everything underneath is out of the way go to 32 Broad clip, broad, blah, broad cloth for the card slots, great tip. Yay, I'm glad. Yeah, it's, it's super cheap. And honestly, like if you're making a ton of NCWs at once, you could just sew all of your card slots in like a nice solid color that might coordinate with everything and then keep them on hand. comments a little better. And then what I'm going to do is just fold this up and put it in So my extra little piece is there, but you can see it's not a mess. <sighs> I just can't handle the mess. <laughs> Your HQ tour video was amazing. Oh, I'm so glad. <sighs> Hopefully it kind of showed the progression. I, I wish that I'd been able to film more of what we did, but I was just too in the moment of doing it to think like, oh, I really need to film this, you know? Oh, I forgot I need to do my card slot backing. Oh, if you guys watched my NCW live from New Year's, I had talked about how it would be really cool to have like three magnet closure. Um, 
And someone sent me a link to one that exists and I emailed my hardware supplier and I was like, hey, can we make this? So might, might be doing that. But they were super cool. Hello, Delia. Yes, we are live now. Are you with us? Okay. I'm gonna iron this and then add my backing. What bag would you recommend for beginner? Hmm. Wow. Handbag for beginner. I feel like I knew this at one point and now... And now I don't know. Um... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, probably, well, if you're a total, total beginner, I would say start with zipper pouches and makeup bags. Um, someone else might have a good answer to that question here, but I would definitely say like, if you've never worked with zippers before, that kind of a thing, start small and work your way up. Because if you start with something that's really big, you might get discouraged, um, especially if it's something that takes a really long time. So my progression as a bag maker was I just did like simple zipper pouches, makeup bags. I had fun with those and improved my skills through them. Um, and then moved on to larger bags because they're not going to be fast when you're first starting. Everything's going to take forever. Um, so I'd hate to say, like, jump into the Gunther Hobo from Sincerely Jen, and then it takes you six to seven hours to make, and you're like, well, that wasn't fun. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, uh, the Devon pouch, maybe. Uh, what I'm using here is Kona Cotton. Oh, Eva said, working on the stuffy shoulder bag and changed up the interior zipper pocket because Lauren gave me the courage to do so. My suggestion is to start with easier to sew materials like cotton woven and master the skill before moving on to heavier materials. Absolutely an excellent, excellent tip. Um, trying to think, I haven't watched many of Jess's videos from Oakla Roots, but I know she uses a domestic. So she might be great to watch for beginner tips. Um, I know that I made an Emily bag using my domestic Juki at one point. So it, it can be done for sure. So now I'm just marking out my card slots. I like to use a ballpoint pen and score the area very well so that when I fold it, it's super easy. Um, and that's one thing I love about using 809 is that it kind of conforms and folds very nicely. It's nice and crisp. And even if I use the water resistant canvas for my card slots, I think I would still interface it with 809 just because it gives such a nice, easy fold. Oh yeah, the Ethel by Swoon. That's a good quick hardware-less bag. Hmm. 
And then I'm measuring an inch from the bottom card slot because all of that is extra that I cut off. And then just so it stays nicely, I'm adding clips. The Peekaboo Beauty Bag is the best. I'll oh, make a few from different materials. 809 definitely folds itself. You can see how nice that looks. Set that aside, set that in there. So that is my NCW ready to go. Just stack that over there. I've got one more to cut out. I think I'm just gonna use black for the lining on this one. Oh man. And I am running low on broadcloth for sure. You can see it's super thin, but once you interface it, it's it's great. Alright, is this piece big enough? No. That is like three dollars a yard. The Petite Tote is a great starter bag. Oh, fun. Um, what is that by Seeds of Love? What's your running low? Only 10 bolts left? No. Um, this is all that I have left, Kylie. But yeah, that's a fair, very fair assumption to make. I do have a pretty decent stockpile. So you can see it's not see-through once it's interfaced. Well, I mean, it's barely see-through if it is at all. I still have on my cutting table the McFly backpack from, uh, I believe, is it All So Petite? I've been meaning to cut and sew that because she did say I could make a video and I'm excited to do it. I just haven't <laughs> gotten a chance. cut card slots out of this section. <laughs> As a total aside, has anyone watched Dexter last night? I did not get to, so no spoilers. Oh my god, I can't wait though. <laughs> my dad is watching the first batch of episodes of Dexter now. And I was like, have you, you really never watched it? He's like, no, I didn't, did you? I was like, yeah, I've seen it so many times. Where have you been? Never seen Dexter, it's so good. I have to talk about pricing. I feel guilty for charging higher prices. I totally understand that. Oh no, that was a Connor meow. Um, you have to charge what you feel comfortable charging, but know that you are worth it. 
I used to charge um, like $85 for a Brooklyn handbag and it was mostly because my skills weren't as good as they now are. So I think when you're starting out, it's okay to charge a little bit lower because you're learning. It's kind of like going to um, a school that cuts hair you know, you're charging a little bit lower of a price because someone is still learning their skills. Um, that kind of thing. I've gotten hooked on Yellowstone. I've heard so much about it, but I've never seen it. I'm currently watching The Witcher. And I want to um, print out like Witcher words of affirmation because I swear everything he is saying I need to hear <laughs> and like the way he says it I'm just like you're right you're right you're so right oh girl you're so right Geralt are you watching Golden Girls oh yeah Love The Witcher, yeah. I'm super, super late to the party. Uh, right now I'm using 809 to interface. Um, I charge, I think, 60 an hour for sewing, and that includes my cutting and, like, I just base it off of my sewing time, more or less. I don't include the cutting and interfacing in that, just because I feel like the 60 an hour has worked fairly well. Um, but if I'm using materials that are more expensive, I do upcharge based on that. Um, so you can definitely base your pricing wherever you feel comfortable. Because I think that's most important. You want to have your most authentic self, more or less, in your business. So if you don't feel comfortable charging a certain price, that's, that's okay. It's your business. No one is here to tell you otherwise. I think we as a community are here to tell each other you're worth more than that. But you have to feel it yourself. Um, my boyfriend thinks I'm obsessed cutting out interfacing while watching movies. I like that's <laughs> I can relate to that so hard because I'm like, why would I sit here and do nothing when I could be cutting out for a bag that I want to make? <laughs> Come on. My son said the same thing about Wheel of Time because he read the books. Oh, I just love how you know the measurements by heart for those card slots. <laughs> yeah. I hate when you ask people to, when people ask to buy a bag and you tell them prices and they look at you like you have three heads or something. Ugh. Um, the little white piece on my heat press is the Teflon sheet. Um, I can't find a link for it. I don't know that they sell it anymore. 
but it's just a Teflon sheet. I really want to use this vinyl. Um, this is something I'm going to be carrying next year. Um, mostly just to test out. We'll see what feedback is like. But I don't think, yeah, that does not match. Like, it looks like it does in the camera, but I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. If it were a darker brown, it would be perfect. And I don't want to put black with it. So I won't. I'll find something else. I just, I have this pile of vinyl here that I've been wanting to use up. Not necessarily use up, but like try out. go with it that I'd want to use instead. Hmm. Okay, and then for lining, I think it would be kind of fun to do blue. Why I think that. Yeah, a deep burgundy would be really pretty with it. I don't think I have any like croc textured. I'm not a big animal texture print person at the moment. That could change. I don't know if I want to finish. What I'm going to do is cut out the base of this bag and interface that. And then I'll hop off just because I need to make lunch. But I figure I may as well cut out the bottom of the bag while I've got my heat press warm, you know? No other part of this bag is going to need interfacing, so. All right, I thought I knew that measurement, but I had to be sure. Every time I cut this bag out, I think of my living, my old house, the living room floor, cutting everything out on the floor. and designing this bag, spending hours and hours on it. I wish I had those hours still to devote to sewing patterns, etc. Teresa said, I love the UV sensitive vinyl that was in the box. Does anyone know if the effect ever stops? That's a great question. I don't, I can't imagine that it wears out. Uh, this ruler is nine and a half by 24. I, I really like the um, 6x24 ruler, but once I found this one, I was like, whoa, life-changing. Um, I love the size of it. 
for bag straps because you can get two sets out of this one ruler. You can get your eight by 24, you know. So that is pretty much it for me. The backstitch one, it does run out of UV power. That's crazy. Yeah, I will be completely honest, I did not test it. I just knew it was pretty and I liked it. <laughs> press is off. I can leave pretty much everything out. Is that Decaville Heavy? Yes. I did just use Decaville Heavy. Oh wow. The effect gets lighter and lighter. Crazy. I look like trash. All right, does anybody have any other questions before I head out? I'm gonna try and get this cat off my sewing area. Get down, no, that's a terrible place for you to be. Get down. Um, Sincerely, Jen has a new free pattern. It's the Midnight Kiss pouch. How cute is this pattern? Super quick. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome week. I am not sure how often I'll be posting videos in December. I was trying to do one every other day, which was fun, but very exhausting. Yeah, that looks like a good beginner bag for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out. I hope you have an amazing week. 